Hey folks, just want to welcome you back to Mr. Cast Iron. Today we're going to make cast iron cube steak, otherwise known as chicken fried steak and gravy. But I'm also going to make some biscuits to go along with this. So we're going to get ready to make our biscuits first. I got my oven preheating at 450 degrees. And to make these biscuits, we're really only going to use two ingredients to do this. I've got uh, two cups of self-rising flour. And I'm going to put about a third a cup of milk. Now I'm going to make this into buttermilk. I don't have buttermilk, but what you can do uh, to improvise on this is just take your milk and just add a little bit of, of, of uh, lemon juice or white vinegar, whichever one you want to make uh, with your milk, and that'll make buttermilk. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead. Uh, I've got, like I said, I've got two cups of flour here, and I just want to put about, oh, about a third of a cup of milk. That's about a third of a cup right there. I'm going to go ahead and put me just a splash of uh, about a cap full of uh, my lemon juice to make this into uh, buttermilk. And then we just want to kind of work this around in here. Uh, as you can see, we don't want to get this real runny. Uh, we want to make this a decent batter. And I'm going to have to add just a little bit more milk. <clears throat> and we'll get that together. I'm going to go ahead and get this all stirred up here. And what we're going to make, we're not going to cut these biscuits. We're not going to roll them out or anything like that. We're just going to get this mixed up. And we're going to drop them into our 12-inch cast iron skillet. Uh, I've got my other 12-inch cast iron skillet preheating with what else? But nothing but bacon grease to fry these cube steaks in. So don't ever get rid of your bacon grease. Be sure and save that, filter it out, and save that in a quart jar. But anyway, we're going to get this mixed up here, and we'll be back in just a minute. Show you these biscuits that we're going to put in this cast iron skillet here, okay? All right, we got this uh, biscuit batter made up. And to do drop biscuits, I'm just taking my uh, tablespoon and just kind of using about a tablespoon's worth and just dropping it in here. They don't have to look pretty or anything. That's a great thing about drop biscuits. But you want to try to keep them all about the same size. That way they'll get done about the same time. And, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about spacing them out too much. Uh, a lot of people say you don't uh, let, them, let them touch. That way they get brown on each side. But I'm of the camp to think that when you make them touch like that, that uh, they'll rise even higher uh, and give you a bigger, thicker biscuit. And so that's kind of what I do. Hmm? Fix, that one. Fix that one, Teresa mm -hmm. says. Ms. Cast Iron, she got me lined out here, folks. So she's OCD, that's for sure. But anyway, I can't wait to do this. I just love drop biscuits. I like anything like dumplings or anything made like this. Uh, Teresa likes to roll her dumplings out when she's making chicken and dumplings. But, man, I like drop biscuits, drop dumpin', dumplings. And as long as they're not doughy. As long as they're not doughy. That's right. So, all right. We about got a skillet full here, so I'm not going to put any more in here. Uh, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, about fourteen in there. So that's what we've got now. We've got our oven, like I said, we've got it preheated. Now one thing I did before we left earlier, I did go ahead and lightly grease my cast iron skillet with just some vegetable oil. You could use probably butter, I guess, if you wanted to. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get these in the oven now. And uh, I want to set my timer for about twelve to fifteen minutes. I'm going to since that cast iron is already uh, cool, it's not real hot, I'm going to jump these up to 15 minutes. That way it'll heat the skillet up as well. Hey folks, alright, we're going to make our uh, dreads. What we want to do is just take one egg, if it'll break here, and uh, we'll drop that in there. And then we're going to add just a little bit of milk. Pretty good little bit actually. And uh, we just want to beat that up there real good. You know, we just want to make that. That way we'll have something for our um, cube steak 
uh, will help hold the flour that way. Now what you want to do on flour, one thing I want to mention first too about these cube steaks, you know these have been run through a machine and uh, they've been tenderized. Now years ago people used either, most people like my mom and Teresa's mom had an old wooden mallet like this and you would just take and take some either wax paper or uh, you know saran wrap or something like that wrap your piece of beef in there and then just pound that meat down until it flattens it out and tenderize it because cube steak is one of the tougher cuts of meat so that's what people did they would take and pound it and tenderize it like that to try to make it a little more tender naturally and of course now these days we have metal ones like this but like I said you can get this done at the store you can buy these already uh, made like this tenderized which I did and uh, you can go from there but what we've got now uh, I've got a little bit of flour here I want to take my, one of my favorite um, SPG and you want to always season your flour before uh, you, you put this uh, mixture in here because it's hard to season this when you fry the cube steak in your skillet so you want to definitely season your flour first get that kind of mixed up now the first thing you want to do uh, you you want to remember this little uh, trick that I've always heard it's like the month of February you spell it F-E-B okay so first thing you want to do is the F which is flour you want to drop it in the flour and just like that and then the E is the egg mixture so you take and mix that in there get it wet and then the B is breading or which in this case we don't have you know any kind of breadcrumbs or anything like that we're just going to double flour it so you take and mix that back in there uh, your second B is actually your flour and so there you have flour eggs and breading on your cube steak and so it's ready now I've got my cast iron skillet here it's preheated it's uh, set at medium high heat and I've got about oh a quarter inch to a half inch worth of bacon grease in it and so we're just going to kind of lay this in there and you always want to push this out away from you because you don't want um, you know anything to splash on you so we're going to go ahead and do another one you want to take and run this through your flour mixture first be sure and get it completely breaded all the way around. I've never heard of this. <clears throat> and uh, then you take, once you've got it breaded like this, just run it through your egg mixture, yeah. get it good and coated. All right, and that helps to hold that flour on there. And then you come back and you bread it one more time. You have lost your mind. I know. I can't help it. You married me. You signed up for it. So anyway. <clears throat> turn that heat up a little bit so anyway we're going to put two of these in here and let these start to cook now what you want to do basically uh, I wish this grease was a little bit hotter before I did this but anyway we'll make it so what we're going to do we're basically going to cook these for about two to three minutes on each side you don't want to flip these you want to let them brown real good uh, for a minute or two or three minutes before you flip it over so we'll, we'll come back here and show you that in just a second all right well our timer just went off on these biscuits so i'm gonna take and pull these out yeah they kind of brown on top there so and they're kind of moving around in here so I, they feel done look done to me but what i'm going to do uh, you don't have to do this, but I just like to take you some butter, just kind of set it on top of one of these biscuits that's real hot and let it kind of start to melt a little bit. And then just kind of rub your, your biscuits a little bit with some butter. Butter your biscuits. Butter your biscuits, baby. Do I butter your biscuits? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. So anyway, you don't, like I said, you don't necessarily have to do this. It's just something I like to do. I like to put a little butter on top of my biscuits while they're hot and let that kind of melt in there and uh, everything. But, you know, they're not pretty, but those are drop biscuits right there. And, uh, man, they're good, I'm going to tell you. If you want to take the time to take and roll them out, you can do that. Make them flaky or whatever. But, uh, anyway, our chicken fried cube steak here chicken fried steak I better turn my insta read on I want to see what kind of temperature we're running 
a little hot in this house. Anyway, oh yeah, it's well done. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull that. Now I've got my little handy dandy Papa's hook that my niece uh, gave this to me several years ago. So we're going to see if we can hook these. Well, wasn't able to. Uh, let me get a spatula here, Teresa. Because I don't want to lose that breading. That's one thing. You want to make sure you keep your breading. And uh, I should have turned it a minute or two earlier because now it's stuck to it. But that's okay. You get her pop. Yeah, see I cooked that one a little long, but that's alright. I know you like them well done. Oh, there goes my breading. Mm -hmm. Okay, but anyway. I'm going to get these other two in here. Now... You know, the, the grease is at a good temperature now. And you just want to take and just lay these in away from you. That way, like I said, you don't, uh, you don't splash grease on you and, and take a chance on burning yourself. So, uh, And you don't want to crowd these either. So we'll let those cook. Going to let the biscuits set here for a minute. Just as soon as these two are done, we're going to make some gravy. And we're going to have cast iron cube steak with biscuits and gravy, folks. We'll be right back. Okay, well, we're going to get these last two here. I'm going to test these real quick. Oh, yeah, they're, they're very well done. All right, so let me uh, make sure they're loose. Oh, yeah, these are loose here. Okay, get my little flipping stick here oh look at that look at that mrs. CI Woo we're gonna be eating good today all right we're gonna let this set and uh, drain on a paper towel plate and uh, we've got our grease here and let me get a fork and see just how much is in there that'd be a lot of gravy if I do it all so I'll tell you what, folks, I'm going to take and pull a little bit of this grease out and we'll be right back and we'll show you how we make our gravy for this cube steak, biscuits and gravy. All right, well, we got all this grease poured out. Basically, there's about two to three tablespoons in here. You want to leave all the little crunchies of the uh, cube steak in here and just kind of start sprinkling you some flour in here. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to make like a roux. Uh, you want to paste basically and uh, we'll get this in here let this begin to come together and then what we're going to do we're going to add a little bit of evaporated milk out of a can you can use just regular milk out of a jug but like if you were out camping or something and you wanted to make gravy then you could take you a, a can of pet milk and you could make your gravy uh, without having to carry refrigerated uh, regular uh, vitamin D milk or whatever whole milk I don't use skim milk or 2% I use whole milk on everything but anyway you get your uh, you get your flour in here that's still a little bit runny I'm gonna add just a little bit more uh, in here so it's not too greasy Teresa doesn't like greasy gravy and uh, I don't either really so we get our flour in there, we get it kind of mixed up. You see how that's starting to thicken up and uh, become like a paste or like a roux, basically. And I need to turn this heat down a little bit. And what you want to do now, <clears throat> you want this to kind of cook a little bit without adding your milk to it first. That way it'll burn off the flour taste. So you don't want to add your milk and water or whatever you're using. Today I'm going to use pet milk, uh, water, and uh, maybe just some extra milk too to add it with it. But anyway, and I never salt and pepper this until it's uh, basically all come together. So there we have our roux. You see how that's kind of pasty all the way around? So we're going to go ahead now with our pet milk. And I'm just going to start pouring that in there a little bit. And I want to kind of mix this around. You just 
just want to kind of add this a little bit at a time and mix it in together. That way your gravy won't be real lumpy or anything. Uh, I mean, you're going to have some lumps in it because we had uh, the crumbs from the cube steak, but you don't want flour lumps if you can help it. Sometimes it's hard to do. It's kind of hard to keep that from happening. And I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of this milk in here now. And we'll just continue to mix this real well. Just continue to stir. That's the thing about gravy. Uh, you know, gravy is kind of a science. It's kind of an art. And uh, you got to watch your heat. You got to watch your consistency of the gravy. And you got to know when to add another little bit of liquid to this. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to this now. And uh, we'll just continue to stir. Let this gravy come together. And that's kind of the consistency you're looking for. It's a little thick for me. I'm going to thin this down one more time with some water. Or you could use milk, either one. Uh, a lot of times I use my milk in the beginning and then I add water to it to kind of help thin it down. My mother is the one that taught me how to make gravy. I think the reason why she taught me how to make gravy was she wanted me to stand here and continue to stir all the time while she was doing other things, making other things for us for supper. But it taught me how to, uh, how to make good gravy, man, you know? So uh, I haven't ever had too many people complain about my gravy. Although I one time made a mistake, me and Teresa was making a video and, and uh, I don't remember what video it was. But anyway, Teresa's real good about putting a lot of flour and sugar and stuff in containers. And we had a container out in the utility room and uh, the labeling on it had kind of wore off a little bit. And uh, she had one container that had some powdered sugar in it. And uh, I went out and got me a cup full of uh, what I thought was flour. And I poured that in there and uh, it never would thicken up like this right here. And I kept working with it and kept working with it. And I mean, several minutes went by and I thought, why is this not thickening up? So I added a little bit more and it never would thicken up. So I tasted it and it was so sweet. And then uh, I don't even know if she was here helping me or whatever record that video. But uh, anyway, she come in from work or whatever and... Uh, I had that gravy there and <laughs> I made her a plate. I didn't say anything about it because it kind of halfway thickened up. It was kind of thin, too thin for me. But anyway, it wasn't too bad as far as thickness and consistency was. But anyway, she took a bite of that and she said, ooh wee, how'd you make that? And uh, come to find out, it was powdered sugar. You remember that? Yes, I definitely remember. <laughs> <And> that was <laughs> nasty. <laughs> it was nasty, she said. So anyway, I want to show you guys something here. Now we've got our gravy uh, made here. Basically, we've got our pork steak or cube steaks, chicken fried steak. But I want you to look at these drop biscuits we made earlier. I mean, they just they they're not sticking to the skillet. They've got a very good crust on the bottom of them. I know you could probably tell there's a couple missing. We had to try them, but I mean they're perfect. Teresa put some butter and jelly on hers earlier, and I mean they're just perfect. And so ugly but they're good they're ugly but they're good but uh we're gonna get us a plate here and uh plate all this up and we'll be back here shortly just to show you what this looks like okay folks we're uh getting this plated up now i've got two or three of these drop biscuits here we've got our gravy that we made from the grease and the um goodies from the uh cast iron cube steak uh, as we fried it and uh, we put this on a plate here. The only thing I didn't tell you about earlier is I went ahead and added a little bit of salt and pepper to this gravy. To uh, you, you always want to add that at the end when you get it all mixed up. And taste your gravy before you ever add anything. Because when you're frying your cube steak or whatever you're frying, whether it's chicken or whatever, your flour already had, as you've seen earlier, we had uh, SPG in it. So it's salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. So, you know, your grease may already be a little bit 
uh, salty. So be sure and make sure you taste it before you add any salt and pepper to it. But anyway, we've got our cast iron cube steak here. I uh, already cut a piece. You can kind of see what it looks like on the inside. Nothing else for me to do really, but to uh, take a bite of it. Mm. Wow, it's got a good crunch to it, a good flavor. These biscuits, man, look at this. Look at that biscuit. That's too big a bite. So anyway, we just wanted to share this with you. We hope you enjoyed it. Cast iron cube steak or chicken fried steak, some people call it. Biscuits and gravy. You can make all this in cast iron. And man, it's awesome. We'll talk to you later. You guys have a great day. It's Mike and Mrs. Cast Iron. We'll see you later. How bye bye. How much do you love me? I love do you a whole bunch. How much? I more, love you. More than, more than I, what? I love you more than biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. That's right. There, there you go. Well, it's close. It's close. <laughs>